Now the main frame consists of these three frame pieces. Two of them are the same, they're identical. You can lay them on top of each other and you'll see that they're exactly the same all the way through, even the holes line up, right? So, and those are the bits that make up the base to which the arms attach. And then you've got the top piece. And this is um, actually ended. Now these two can go either way. There's no difference. You can turn them that way or that way. Doesn't matter. This one, it does matter because um, we've got a little hole there. And at this end, we've got the holes for the Mobius platform. Now, there's no Mobius holes. See, these are the Mobius holes here. Let me get this on the right angle here. These are the two holes for the Mobius platform, which is a separate piece of stuff. So this will end up going on here. Oops, dropping bits everywhere. And so these holes line up. You can see through those holes. If I line them up there, which one I turn on this? There you go. So you can see those holes line up. That's where your Mobius will fit. So it's no good building it so that this bit is at the back or you'll regret it. All you'll be able to do is put your Mobius on and see where you've been, which isn't quite so much fun. Um, although it is quite good to do that. Um, so there you go. So, uh, but we won't be putting this piece on just yet. What we're going to do is put the pillars, because we need these pillars here, we're going to mount these pillars to one of the base pieces. Pillars come in one bag, the screws come in another. And one of the reasons that I have opted for the Banggood version of this mini quad is because a lot of the other frames give you tiny little short screws for the pillars and they strip out because these pillars are just aluminium or aluminium for the American version. Um, and if you don't use long enough screws, they just, the threads just strip. Some of them I've seen are as short as probably five or six millimeters and it just, the, the frame falls apart. But this one, it has good long screws for everything. So the next step is to bolt these members to one of these bottom plates, screw them in place. It's pretty easy to work out where they go um, and you'll be able to work from my video to see for yourself um, if you don't know. All these bolts are the same length, so it doesn't matter which ones you use. Hooray, hooray, that's quite, I think they're all the same length. I better just check on that. Um, yeah, they all look the same length, so it doesn't really matter which ones you use. Uh, and there are six pil pillars. There's two at each end, actually eight, I think, eight pillars, yes. Two at each end and two along the frame itself. So we just do these up fingers tight at this stage. Um, we don't need to worry about tightening them super tight just yet until we get them all in place. Here we go, a couple more. So we can see that these pillars are probably these ones. Um, yes, they are. I'm pretty sure they're these ones. I'll have to look at my other one to find out actually in a moment, but no, that's where they go. It's a pretty simple task. It's easy. We're getting the, the arms with a hard bit. This is the easy bit, but there's another hard bit coming up. Don't be too upset about it though, because it's not gonna make life too difficult. Oh, that's the wrong hole. That's where an arm goes. Must be this hole here. Oh no, I've done, <laughs> I've done that wrong. Um, yeah, don't look at this. Just ignore what I say. Ignore the man in the corner behind the curtain. Um, I'll put this down so you can see the right holes in a moment when I've worked out what the right holes are. God. Um, you wouldn't believe this is my seventh ZMR build, would you? But um, it, uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it's pretty simple and I bet you are, I bet you are so happy after putting those arms together that you didn't decide to build a hexacopter because they take a bit of time. Even just putting those arms together takes a bit of time and doing another two, oh, you know, sort of the fun quotient is gone by the time you've done the fourth one. So, yep, yeah. here we go, the final one. So there you go, I'll hold that so you can see where those go and you can see from the bottom and you can see where those go. Uh, for putting yours in because this one didn't come with instructions actually just as well I'm doing a build video because there were no instructions with this particular one. Yeah, who'd have thought that? Um, so now what we've got to do also is our flight control is going to go in here. So we have to put in those standoffs I was talking about and I showed you in the first video. Here they are, plastic standoffs. And we also need to look at what size standoffs to use because I'm using the Freesky D4 R2 receiver and I'm pretty sure these standoffs are just the right size for that receiver. Excuse me while I reach way out of shot here because what we're going to do is slide the receiver under the Mobius platform. So you can see if I make my standoffs long enough, I can slide the receiver under, sorry, under the um, uh, flight controller platform. So what we do now is we put these in. You can do them one of two ways. You could put them through like this and put a nut on the back. But that's going to be a bit long, it's going to bang into the other board. So what I prefer to do is remember I mentioned you'll need some nylon screws as well. I can find what I've done with them. Uh, laying around here in a bag somewhere. Oh no. I hate it when stuff goes missing. I should tidy my bench. Someone will tell me that. You should tidy your bench. Um, oh, there's some in here. I'll use these ones. Um, 
and again these Chinese bags I'm trying to open out of shot. Um, right, so what we can do here is put the screw through and then put the post on the top because that way the head of the screw doesn't poke out nearly so far as the threaded portion of the bolt as you can see. So we put these in and this is the standard size for flight controllers. If you're going to use something else, I don't know why you would, um, if it's a standard flight control like the CC3D, you'll be able to put that in there. But oh, honestly, um, the naze is just, the, oops, I used the wrong post then. The naze is just the best option for this particular type of quad. It's just so effective. And I know a lot of people have switched from the CC3D to the naze and never regretted it for a moment. So there you go. Uh, here we go. There's only one more to go. One more screw. So I'm hurrying here so I don't have to do fast forwarding because that's really, I, I find it annoying when people put fast forwarding in their videos. And uh, so there you go, that's all the stuff that needs to go on the bottom. And uh, as I said, our receiver, our freeze guy receiver, fits nicely under there. And as you can see, there's still plenty of room above it for the NACE32 board. Lovely way to install things. If you've got a bigger receiver, then you might not be able to fit it under there. If you're using something like steam powered radio, radio gear like Spectrum <laughs> or Orange, you may find you can't fit a receiver under there, which means you have to fit it somewhere else. But if you're using the Free Sky, that is just the place to put it and it's just the receiver to use. Right, so now we go around and we tighten up these, um, these bolts. And to be honest, I've never used Loctite on them. And because there's enough thread in these um, pillars, you can actually torque them up quite a bit more than uh, the motor bolts and things. So you can actually put enough torque on there and you might have to use some pliers to stop the pillar from turning. Put enough torque on there to stop them from coming undone unwantedly. Here we go, do them all up and give them a, yeah, give them a reasonable tweak. You know, remembering it is aluminium, but you can, because of the amount of thread engaged, use a fair bit of force if you want to. Um, there you go. And if, fortunately, if they do come out, they're not going to fall anywhere because there's not enough gap between the plates for the bolts to actually come out. And I'm going to talk about um, maintenance in one of the final videos in this build series because you really do need to maintain this stuff. Anything that moves will wear and things can go wrong. Now, for the um, nylon bolts, we just grab a screwdriver, if I can find one, and we tighten those up too. Oh, here we go. Hopefully the screwdriver is a, yes it is, it's a one of these. Nylon you can't tighten up so much because it's, um, it tends to stretch, but just, you know, give them a tweak and get them tight enough. Don't use Loctite on plastic, it will ruin it. There you go. So now we've done that part of our board. Um, we could put the nose board on now, but we're not going to because now comes a really fiddly bit. We're going to put the arms on this thing and wire it up, um, wire up all the uh, uh, wires for the um, ESCs and also to provide power for your FPV gear. Now I did tell you I'd uh, let you know that later in the video which way these motors go depending on whether they're straight or straight wired or cross wired. The straight wired ones turn anti-clockwise and the crossed wired ones turn clockwise. So that's all you need to know because when we put these on the frame then we need the anti-clockwise ones or the straight ones on the front right and left rear corner which will be, let me zoom out a bit and so you can see the mess that has become this bench. Um, and of course we do need to decide which is the front of the quad eventually, but um, so the straight wired ones will be at the front right and the rear left. It's a straight one as well, you see, I've labelled it. So that's where those ones will go. And the um, cross wired ones will go the other way. So simple as that. And I'll, I'll make a note, you'll see, I'll put a little diagram on the video as we go along so you can see which one to put where. Okay, now things get kind of messy. Um, what we've got to do is uh, temporarily bolt these arms in place using just a couple of bolts because we're going to make up the wiring loom. This is assuming we're not using a power distribution board, of course, because um, we don't, this is the cheap, uber cheap, the budget version. So there's no power distribution board involved here. So what we've got to do is put the arms on just temporarily. And that just means just loosely fitting the uh, the bolt, the nuts on these bolts because they're nylock. You don't want to tighten them down because then you've got to go through the painful process of undoing them. So two bolts on each arm. Here we go. And just the lock. And remember that I've done that wrong. Oh my goodness, I've done it wrong. I put the wrong arm in the wrong place. Um, the 
we're going to designate which is going to be the front. In fact, it pays to do that now because it's so easy to get it wrong. So I'll take some more of my tape. And if you get it wrong, it's such a pain later on. So this is going to be the front of our quad. Let's call this, let's call this arbitrarily, which end are we going to make it? This is going to be the front. I'm going to put a big F on here so I know this is the front. There you go. Front. Front. Depends which way the camera's facing. Okay, so that's going to be the front. So in that regards, we need a straight wide one on the front right arm so that's going to be this way so this arm will go on here so I put the arm in place and just a couple of bolts as I said to hold it in place where's the hold on there it is and I did mention early on and just to remind you that this is the fiberglass version of the frame uber cheap if you use the carbon one nothing is any different it's just the material that's made from all the holes all the sizes are the same you can interchange the parts not a problem so that's the straight one. Another straight one will be diagonally opposite. So where is my, where have I put all my arms? That's a crossed one. That's a straight one. So the other straight one goes over here on this side of the quad. And I'll do it, I'll do it, a layout and diagram so you can see for yourself pretty easily once um, I've got these things in place. Just make sure not to get the wires trapped and you put them in. Might have to slide the ESCs along a bit if they don't quite fit. That's why we have them loosely cable tied or heat shrunk at this stage. And another two bolts go in here. I should, I should speed this. I hate speeding stuff up. I won't speed it up. If necessary, I'll cut out this bit because all you can see is the back of my hand. And the scars are healing up nicely from the mini quad where it hit me the other day. Um, and so that only leaves the other arms and they can go either way because again, they'll be diagonally opposite each other and reverse rotation. Where's the hole gone? Man, here's a hole. I'll use this one in the meantime. Again, I have to slide this ESC out of it because otherwise it'll get caught. There we go. As I say, this is a rather fiddly bit of the build. Um, perhaps someone's got a better way of doing it than I have done it. I don't know. I guess we'll find out when they read the comments on this. I'm sure people will be quick to respond. Here we go. One more arm to go. You couldn't make much money building these, I tell you what. I know you can buy ready-built drones from, like, Helipal have the Storm drone. I've been advertising. They seem to be selling a, an awfully large amount of them, um, probably because so many people want to get into this. They've been selling a snot load of them, looking at the reviews on YouTube. But um, I don't know how they can build them including the labor for that price. I mean, you can put one of these together, as you've seen, looking at the bill of materials, it doesn't cost much for the parts. But when you factor in the time, I mean, you know, if you've already put those arms together, you'll know that uh, there's a fair bit of time involved in this. Uh, move this along, there we go. So there's our arms loosely, and we've got them in the right place, because now what we've got to do is take these wires that are coming out of the ESCs and things and start running them around here. That's because we're putting the wires between the two frames because the other frame, remember the, we've got another bottom frame here, eventually that's going to go on top. It's going to be sandwiched in between. But uh, at this stage, we're just going to run the ESC wires loosely around and we're going to have to do some more soldering in a minute. So, yeah, um, get ready for that. It's not hard, it just takes a bit of practice. There we go. So, in reality, this is actually not very hard. You know, as I say, there's no power distribution board in this. So all we're going to do is connect all the reds together and all the blacks together. I mean, it's not rocket science. So that red goes there and that red goes there. And this red over here comes over here. We solder all those together. And then we run a wire at the back, of course, because we're going to have to put our, um, our connector on there for our battery. And we also have to have wire coming out here for the um, FPV. And quite often I use a JST for that. Or well, you can hardwire it, doesn't matter. But So now we're getting to the hard bit. I say hard because we've got a lot of wires to join up here. And there are two ways we can do that. We can just solder the wires together. As I say, red to red. Put all the reds together and then join them together. Put all the blacks together and then join them together. Or we can use a power distribution board. And I showed you the... Um, the, well, I think it's a Team Legit Power Distribution distribution Board in part one of this video. But, I mean, um, they, they cost a little bit of money. You might not want to spend that sort of money. This is a budget build. But if you want to make things easier, what you can do is get some of this. Now, this is just copper clad 
circuit board you can use fiberglass or one that's called phenolic which is like a brown uh, resin based board this is double sided it doesn't have to be double sided it can be single sided and all you've got to do is cut a piece that'll fit nicely in here perhaps between the screws on the flight controller and then score a line down the middle and with your modeling knife and a straight edge simply cut away some that you don't need to get into fancy etching or anything to, to make this work you just score a couple of lines down here if I can do this without my glasses on because I haven't got my granny glasses on at the moment so just because the copper coating is not that thick it doesn't take much to actually cut through it and underneath the fiberglass is quite strong you won't accidentally cut it in half so just put a couple of parallel scores in there like this Ugh. and then while you're watching television you've got some spare time you can just simply use your knife to peel away that little strip you've created in the middle. Now I'm not going to do it on here because I haven't got my granny glasses on and I'll hurt myself. Uh, but I'll just do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Now I hope you can see what I've done there. I've effectively divided the copper in half and the other side obviously I didn't go right through. There's the fiberglass you can see poking through. Just use my sharp knife to scrape away the copper. So now I can have one half can be my positive side, one half can be my negative side. I've got a power distribution board and all it cost me was a little bit of copper circuit board. You can probably, I'd say, well, a few months ago, I've said you can get this down in your Tandy shop, but you can't because Radio Shack's closed, isn't it? It's gone bankrupt, but I'm sure you'll find some of this laying around if you want to. This is one way of doing it. I'm going to show you, uh, show you how to do both ways in this build because um, you may not have any of the circuit board. Let's get on. Let's do it. Let's get soldering. Okay, no talk about soldering will be complete without a mention of the fact that this has got a small tip. You see, compared to my finger, it's quite a small tip. I was using this when we did the ESCs, but... We're going to be doing some heavy duty soldering now with thicker wire, 14 gauge wire. So we need to use a soldering iron tip that's a bit bigger. And you'll notice if I compare these two, this tip here has a much bigger end, much more area where it can transfer the heat through to the copper and the solder that we're heating. So ideally, if you've got a soldering iron where you can change the tips, take out the small tip we've been using and put on the bigger tip. It'll be much, much easier to do soldering of the heavy stuff with the bigger tip fitted and it only takes that long if you get yourself a decent soldering i'm really good investment make yourself a good investment in a really useful soldering iron and as i say there's a cheap ones are available on ebay or hobby king you know you're talking under 20 bucks sometimes for these things brilliant so i'll turn that on and we'll get started we've got these bullet connectors on here we don't want those they're just going to get in the way bullets are unreliable bullets are heavy bullets are, <clears throat> are a point where you can get high, high resistance and that can cause heating and it can cause intermittent motors stopping and, and flips and all sorts of things so really you know they're a great idea for some things but uh, not for a mini quad um, and got to make sure we've got them all off da, 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 da. one left over here is there somewhere hiding yes there it is so we've trimmed those off leaving as much wire as possible because we want these wires to be able to reach to the point where we're going to solder them pull off the little bit of plastic insulation that's left behind from the bullet that's the heat shrink that's left behind on the ends of the wires and you know this all takes an amazing amount of time as i've said before i wouldn't want to have to do this for a living now as i said what we could do is solder all these red wires together and to do that we simply as i've shown you before we just have to ring back to get and this time you'd leave a bit more wire actually because you're going to have to overlap things so if i'm showing you how to do it the first way which is just solder all the wires together so you ring back that and we leave a few millimeters of wire exposed before we tin it then we come in with our soldering iron and we tin that plenty of solder there you go do the other one plenty of solder there you go got to keep the solder going on that really thick and not too long as i say because it'll boil the flux out of it and then the solder won't join very well you have a dry nasty crusty joint so let's just do the other one red ones there we go You may not be as quick as this, I've done this lots of times, and I am a professional. So, and remember, no hippie solder, that'll ruin you. Get all these wires out of the way. You notice, you don't dwell. You get the solder on there and you get out. Nice and quick, that's the way to do it. So now I've got all my red wires tinned up, and of course we're going to need some wires to uh, connect up our XT60 connector as well. And what I generally do there is I join my wires up to the to the loom. So here's my 14 gauge wire I'm going to be using, and I'm going to tin the ends of that as well. Just move the frame out of the way because you know we're really getting into soldering now. And 
helps to have the square cut on the end. This was the way it came from the cellar, so it was, they cut it, I don't know what these, an axe, I think. So just square that up a bit. And again, we want a reasonable amount of, middle, of wire poking out this time, not too little. And this is why we have the thicker tip, because this, this wire will take more heat to actually be able to solder. Let's get stuck in there. Remember, iron, give the iron a bit of fresh solder, go underneath and apply the solder. Hopefully I'm still in shot. Apply the solder to the iron, or at least, sorry, to the wire, or at least where the wire and the iron touch. All right, it's a bit hard with my shaky, shaky hands. I've got to say, see, I have three hands here, years of experience. And try not to get any bits poking out like that piece is there. There we go. So now I have tinned that wire, and I'll do the same with the red one. Oops, I didn't go in deep enough. Maybe my knife's blunt. It's quite possible. This is the original blade in this modelling knife. I have never changed it in something like 20 years. It's amazing, isn't it? But I have sharpened it a few times. I'll get a close, I'll get you a closer view of this. Okay, here we go. Trying not to move things out of shot or get my head in the way. Get a bit of solder on the two to get them wetting and that'll help the, the heat transfer through to the rest of the wire. So then you can pour the solder on the rest of the wire and you will have to rotate this because the bit on the back won't wet naturally. There we go. And I'm just going to put a little bit more on because, as I say, you want to have these loaded up with fresh rosin-filled solder. There we go, and it's got a bit of a bubble on it. That's great. Nice, sort of curvy bit on the end there. It's not a, just a sharp, spiky bit. Now, unfortunately, all these red wires will not reach to one point because they're a bit short. See, we can't get these two together. So what we're going to have to do is use a bit of intermediate wire. doesn't matter what length it is. doesn't even really matter what colour it is, but it should be modestly thick. We can use this 14 gauge wire if we want to, or if you've got some other wire lying around which is, you know, about the same size as that, you can use that. I'm going to go and have a hunt, see what I can find. I found a bit of 16 gauge wire which is kind of thicker than that, but thinner than the 14 gauge we're going to be using for the main lead. So I'm going to just tin the ends of that for you, because this is going to act as a jumper between the, oh I'm not even doing it in shot, sorry about that. This is going to act as a jumper between the two sets of red wires, like so, twiddle it up. Solder it. I might cut this out because it's all boring watching me solder wires. You've watched me once, you've watched me a million times. So I probably will cut this out. So I've tinned up this piece of wire. Ah, it's still actually quite hot. Um, that's going to provide me with a way to join these sets of red wires with those sets of red wires. And this is what we've got to do now. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because we've got to actually join those three wires together. Yeah, it, it does get a bit interesting when you start doing that. And one thing we've got to do before we do that is get our heat shrink because we're going to have to put some heat shrink over that join when we've done it. Otherwise, especially with a carbon frame, we could find it shorting out and that would really ruin our day. So here we go. I've got some appropriately coloured heat shrink. Putting the heat shrink on now actually helps too because it, it actually keeps two of the wires together. The two front wires here, these are going to be held together by the heat shrink. So I'll push this through. This piece of heat shrink might be too long, I'm afraid. Try and get it so that we can get both wires through because we can reposition these later if we need to. Yeah, that's too long. I'll have to shorten this up a bit. There we go. So I can push it on far enough. And the wires will poke out enough to solder. Sorry my hands are so big and you can't get a shot because I need to see what's happening here more than you do. So there we go. As I said, this is fiddly. This is why a power distribu distribution board is not a bad idea, but it, it, as you'll see, it's not essential. It's not an absolute must have. We can get around it. So right now I've got my two wires here. I'll just twist them around a bit so you can see what I can see. There we go. And you'll notice that they are just parallel. And if I put this piece of wire that I've already done here in there, I should be able to just apply heat and it should all just solder together. Now I'm going to do it really hard to see from here. I'm going to put a bit more solder on this piece of wire that I've made up here because it's not, it doesn't have enough solder on it to make it all flow nicely. Right. So now if I just put some heat on here, I'll put it on, should put it on the bottom like this and it should all flow together, but I can't actually do that while I'm in shot. So I'm just going to hopefully, yes. And you can see that shot there. You can see the wire is just, everything's flowed together as I said it would with that solder on there. 
So now what we can do is slide the heat shrink over, but actually I've cocked this up a bit. I'm sorry, I've made a little mistake here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that heat shrink off there because this is the front up here. And remember, we have to have our wires coming out the back. So we're going to keep our wires for our battery as short as possible. So I will take my trusty modeling knife and I will cut that heat shrink off. Consider it to be sacrificial simply for lining things up. That's what I'll say. It wasn't a mistake. I did this on purpose. So I'm just going to cut this heat shrink off like so. There we go. And I'm going to connect up the positive wire for our battery to the same place. Now this is getting pretty, pretty interesting, isn't it? But again, heat shrink to the rescue. I've got some thicker heat shrink here, which I will cut off, and hopefully that will hold everything together for the purposes of soldering that up. Now find a piece, cut it to the right length. Sorry, I'm doing this out of shot. So now if I slide this heat shrink over here, and our red wire into there. Hopefully this will be just the right size to slide over all of that, like this. Here we go. Like so. And then I can pull this back here. And actually that is a bit long still, so I shall trim it down, otherwise it'll be too close to the join. If you have your heat shrink too close to the join, then when you apply the heat, it shrinks too soon, and then you can't push it back over. So here we go, let's try it again. This is all very dodgy. So you can see, even though I've done this lots of times, um, you know, things still take a bit of time. So don't feel bad if you're struggling away with your build and you're thinking, this is really hard and I'm not getting anywhere. Well, look at me. So there we go. Now you can see that this joint is all ready to take solder because we've got everything lined up. The key here is we've got to try and heat this up without the whole rest of it falling apart. So excuse me while I try that and I make a fool of myself here on the camera. Let's go. Let's see what an idiot we can make of ourselves. I'll just turn this around because that's going to put that in exactly the right place and I'll use the frame as a support so here we go I'm heating up this and it should start to flow into the others there we go no that didn't work very well this is dry I'm going to add some more solder because as I say lots of solder is the key and the more solder you add the fresher the flux that's going to be on there making it more likely to flow readily so here we go putting pressure on oh that's very hot ah, oh ah, very hot but it has flowed. It's not my, not my best piece of work by far, but it has flowed. So now we've got a red wire on and those two red wires are joined. So now I can slide this heat shrink down, hopefully. Hopefully it hasn't pre-shrunk too much. Pull this down. Ugh, if it's going to move, hopefully it will move. But as I say, sometimes the heat shrink shrinks too soon and you can't move the damn stuff. Oh, that's a bit of a pain. So what I'm going to do actually is just trim a bit away and try moving it now. Here we go, that's done it. Probably can't see a damn thing here because of the limited shot. So let's just, here we go, it's moving, don't worry, there we go. So that's, I can now slide the heat shrink down over that. And what I'm gonna do is just cut away that heat shrink here so it looks half neat. You may think this is pretty bodgy, but yeah, that's one of the reasons that, you know, it's, sometimes it's worth going out and buying that little bit of circuit board because it will save you a lot of farting around when you're actually doing stuff like this because this bit of soldering is probably the hardest bit of soldering in the whole of the mini quad if you don't have yourself a little bit of copper circuit board. Ah, there we go. That's gonna, it looks a bit rough, doesn't it? But I mean, it's going to work because I'll slide that down there and now I will get my trusty heat gun and we will... Shrink it down and you'll see that it'll look not too bad at all. Oh, which is out of shot, grabs his heat gun. Here we go. Right, let's fire it at that. There you go. It's looking reasonably tidy. Four wires into one, or three wires into one, four wires all together. Ah, banging things around. So that's taken care of that. I'll pan out, well, pull out a bit now so you can see what we're doing. There we go, so now we have our battery wire goes off over here, we'll put our XT60 on there. The two red wires are joined and we've got enough length here that we can join the other two red wires over here. But one thing we must remember is that we need to join another red wire onto here because that's going to provide our FPV equipment with some power. If we just join, I've done this before, trust me, I built an entire mini quad and realized, oh my dear, um, I've connected the ESCs, but I haven't got any source of power for my FPV gear or my LEDs. What do I do? So again, that's where this little power distribution board option is a lot easier because you just solder extra wires onto here. Brilliant, really quick, really easy. So, but I'm showing you the wire way, the way to do it with wiring anyway. So now what we would do is 
solder these three together there, but with an extra one to go off for powering our FPV. And what sometimes I do is I use a, G a JST pigtail, these are JST leads, and I'll just solder the JST lead onto here, like so. So this thing goes off and I can plug anything into there. I can plug in my LEDs, my power for my FPV, um, you know, anything I want can plug into there. It looks just like a 12 volt battery connection. Um, that's the way to do it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you the power distribution board option, this little tiny piece of copper circuit board, how that can neaten this up immensely. Now one of the first things you've got to do with your copper board is make sure it's clean. I use this Scotch-Brite pad, give it a bit of a buff up with that, that'll get any oxides off so that it's nice and shiny and that means it will actually, the solder will stick to it really well. You can't solder to copper board that is all tarnished and old. So then what we'll do is we'll put a bit of solder on here, we'll tin it as it's called, and as you can see with the good iron that solder flows really quickly. I'll move back into shot because it's all out of whack. Um, with a hot iron, this solder just flows like water. Look at this, that's beautiful. So the reason I tin that is twofold, makes it easier to solder the wires to it later, and it also stops it from corroding, from oxidizing, because you know when air gets at the copper, it does oxidize fairly quickly, and we don't want this all oxidizing because that changes the resistance, makes it, you know, grotty. Here we go, quick tinning, simple as that. Right, we're back to having some bare tinned wires, and all we have to do, I mean this is so simple, it's the simplicity itself. All you can do is solder all the red wires onto one side of this board and all the black wires onto another. It really is that simple. So I'm going to bring this around here, and I'm going to solder this red wire onto here. I'll just, I won't bother talking while I'm doing it because it'll just annoy you, and it will take me longer to do it. So I'll just add some extra solder on here, extra solder on these wires, and I'll just, instead of talking about it, I'll just do it. One wire. Another wire. And then over this side, it's just as simple. A bit more solder. Look at that. I mean, that was a whole lot better than farting around, wasn't it? I mean, that's such a simple, quick way. And of course, we have to bring our battery lead in here as well. So that can come over here and I'll put a big bit of blob of solder on here so we've got somewhere for that to go. And what I'll do is I'll actually put my battery lead, um, well, it doesn't really matter where you put it, this has got enough conductivity. So I'll actually just make a bit of a gap here and solder it on here, like so. I'm still in shot. Bit of fiddling and farting around. I'll move one of these wires because that's actually Stopping me from getting in there. Ooh, here we go, take that one off and move it over to the close edge. Sorry my hand is blocking the shot, but all right, here we go. So now I can solder this wire onto there. Ah, oh, piece of cake. I'll just move this one back a bit. Piece of cake. There we go. So all the red wires are soldered. <laughs> as simple as that. And now a little battery lead that goes off to our FPV, well that's simple too. I can just solder the red wire onto here or here or anywhere on this pad here and I solder the black wire onto here. And again with the black wires from the ESCs we put them all onto this side. So it'll be just as simple. Solder those on. Piece of cake. And of course we have our battery lead, our negative battery lead, which I've prepared over here. And that will go on this side. So we just do the same with the black that we've done with the red. Simplicity. For all for the sake of about 10 cents with a circuit board. I really recommend this as the best option, but if you don't have this, can't get this. In fact, if people are really, really, you know, need a little bit of circuit board, um, I'll put some links in the uh, description of this video and in the first video so you know where to get it. And if you're really stuck, then maybe um, I'll get some and chop it up and you can basically, uh, I'll send it out to you if you send me um, an email, maybe even a stamp addressed envelope because I can't really afford to send too much stuff. Postage from this country is terrible. So I'll do this, come back to you in a moment. Right, now here you can see I have put all the reds and blacks together there, um, going out and I've got my two battery leads coming out this side, which is the back because I labeled the front so I know I'm doing it the right way around. Um, I've also got the JST, this JST connector here. This is going to power my FPV. Why would I put a plug on it? Well, because sometimes you might want to fly without your FPV on. If you just want to do some line of sight, perhaps you're at an event or you, you know, you've got other people who are flying FPV and you don't want to bother them by, you know, hogging a channel or two on the FPV, you can just unplug it. And it's great. Also, if you need to take your FPV gear out, it means it's not uh, not so hard to remove. So I'm just going to push this through here, through a little gap there. Um, I show, and this shows you how easy it is to add stuff when you've got your... Uh, got your system set up like this. I'm just going to, I'll do it around the side here. 
um, actually what I'll do is I won't, I'll bring the wires around the side because one of the problems you face is that with all these wires there's only three millimeters of gap between the plates so you don't want to have too much thickness in all this so I'm going to keep these wires instead of running them over the top of other wires I'm going to bring them around the side like this so that I can uh, I can solder them to that little plate without having to run over the top of other wires hang on oh this is people say oh how come you don't how can these build videos take so long I'll tell you they take so long because it is not easy to do some of this stuff with the camera peeking over your shoulder so there we go that's now put that in there and make sure that goes outside those nut bolts there so there we go there is our oops move into shot again there is our FPV power installed here we go it goes towards the back of the quad because that's where our video transmitter will be and we're, you know, that's pretty good. Now, as to how do you hold this in here, you can glue it in or, or tape it if you want to, but remember, three millimeters is all the thickness you've got, so you don't want to have too much stuff going on around there. Um, what I recommend you do, and in fact, what I'm going to do here is there's some little slots here. You could actually run the wires under the slots to avoid having them running over the top of each other as I've got them here, because that's this wire here on its own is reasonably thick. And in fact, it's probably three millimeters on its own. So there's going to be a bit of a bump here. I might reroute this wire so that it travels through the little slot here and comes out without going over the top of the red wire. Ah, oh, a lot of messing about, but when you get it right, it's pretty good. So here we go, plastic in hand. And so I never throw anything away. It's always a use for something, eh? I, I always hang on to a lot of stuff, which is why my workshop is so damn full of rubbish. <laughs> but eventually, you find some of the rubbish comes in handy. And the plastic here, this is quite a tough plastic. It's not gonna, you know, basically, it's not gonna be pierced by the wires that are here. So there you go. It needs to be a piece that's big enough to cover where all the wires are. And then you can just plonk that on there and your plate goes over. Ta -da. And even though you can see the electrical bits, you cannot touch them. That's the important bit. So now we need 14 pairs of hands, which is always exciting, because what we're going to do is we're going to undo these bolts, slip this over and put the bolts back in. So in order to stop all these screws from falling out the back, what I recommend is that you tape them in place so that when we take the nuts off, they don't fall out. So get out your tape. Actually, duct tape's better than masking tape. Masking tape's not very strong, but I've got masking tape on the bench. So that's what I will use. If you've got duct tape, then use it in preference. It's much stickier than masking tape. Hopefully we'll get away with this. Here we go. <clears throat> and do all four corners. Like so. I should have cut this beforehand, shouldn't I? Would have saved time. Never mind. This build video is going on way too long as it is. I mean, I was going to do it originally in three parts and now it's about 45 million parts. So what we need to do, and this is another reason why we didn't do the screws up, because we don't have to use an Allen key to take these nuts off, because we've put tape over the top of them. So we take each of the nuts off and you'll find the arms will sag down a little bit, but not too much. Get these wires out of the way because we don't want them getting into things. I should have cut this a bit shorter, but I've got about a meter of wire hanging off here. Here we go. And so cut these off, or unscrew these, I should say. And we have to take all of them off because we can't put the frame on, the bottom plate on, until all the nuts are off for obvious reasons. Or maybe not so obvious if you've been sleeping through the first part of this video. There you go. So now, remember these can go either way or that way, doesn't matter. But don't forget our insulating plate, which I've lost. Oh man, what have I done with it? I just took it off. Oh, this is the problem when you get old, you know, things are straight right in front of you and you cannot see them for looking, oh, it's underneath. There we go, told you, right in front of me, couldn't see. But in my, to my um, defense, it is clear. Right, so that goes on there. Then you've got to position these without pushing the bolts through the back. So. Put your fingers underneath, guide it in, and as you do each one, just put the nut on. Only needs to be a turn or two just to hold it. If you can get away with it. There we go, and we'll do, make sure your wires are all laid out nicely if you can. Initially, you only need to get two bolts on each arm just to hold them in place. The first two are easy, and then it gets harder. Especially if you 
easier if you don't have big booty fingers like me. All right, <clears throat> over here, push things around until they line up. Now, if you, I suppose if you're making these for a living, you'd have a jig set up for this, but I don't. Okay, we're starting to look like a mini quad now because it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Um, here we go. Now. Beautiful. So now I can take this tape off. And our arms are in place. Our wiring is in place. So as you can see, you know, we're really getting along with this build now. So what I'll do next is I will um, put the other four bolts in. I can find them scattered across my bench and one thing to note when you're putting this together make sure the wires for the ESCs aren't trapped between the arms and the plates you don't want that you want to make sure that they're traveling around the side of the plates and that they're free or at least reasonably priced all right and and some of these ZMR250 kits they give you spare bolts don't know if they do in this one because I haven't counted them and I have probably lost half of them anyway because in the process of this build, I've made an enormous mess on my bench. I'll cut this bit out. You never see this bit. Woo! Lucky me. Okay, so here's our ZMR250. We've got the arms on, we've got the bolts in, we've got the ESC leads hanging out here. We've got the battery connector at the back. We've got a little power distribution board that I made here as the easiest way to put all these wires together now. As I say, it's a piece of circuit board. What I'm going to do, I've got some circuit board here. So for the first, I don't know how many people, but I've got enough to make, I don't know, maybe a dozen or two dozen of these little boards. I'll make some up. And as a, a gift to all these subscribers and viewers who have uh, honored me by watching these videos, I'll give them away. So email me your name and address, postal address, and if you're in quick enough that I've got some left, I'll send you one. So thank you very much. If you do that, I'll let you know whether I've run out or not. And if I haven't run out, you get one of these in the mail for free, no charge at all. Um, just a little bit of thank you to all those people that watch these videos. Anyway, next step is we're gonna put our XT60 on here. And a lot of people make this lead really short. Uh, I don't, because if you make it really short, it's actually more difficult to keep the battery lead out of the prop than if you make it longer. Because when you make it longer, you can do what I've done on this one here, and that is you can put a rubber band around it here. Oops, where am I going into shot? Put a rubber band around it to hold it out of the way. See, if I rubber band the, the battery lead to one of these posts, then it's well out of the way and it doesn't fall into the props because that's a real, the number of uh, mini quad batteries I've seen with big chunks out of the insulation because they've fallen into the props is ridiculous. So we're going to make it long enough that it'll just sit up high above that plate there like that. Where are we that way? And it'll keep it out of harm's way. It also means if you really stuff up the soldering, you can cut a bit off and try again. But uh, I'll do that now. Right, the length I use for that kind of setup is 70 millimeters from the back of the quad. So we get our ruler measure out 70 millimeters. I just deal on old money now, new money. I don't deal on old money. Here we go, 70 millimeters, about there. And then we chop off the, uh, these side cutters are pretty crap actually. Cut off the unwanted, unnecessary bits. There you go, finally, I'm rid of my one meter of black silicon wire. Throw that in the bin. Well, I'll keep it, but uh, there we go. So now we're gonna do is ring bark this, solder it onto the XT60 with some heat shrink, and we're ready to go. I think I've shown people how to solder these before. I use a, a, one of these uh, crescent wrenches or adjustable wrenches to stop my XT60 from falling over while I'm soldering it. So I'm going to put plenty of solder in here, try and do this in shot, but the angles are all wrong, so excuse me for that. Oops. Um, put plenty of solder in the little buckets here where the wire is going to go. That should be really sort of quite, not overflowing, but filled up reasonably. Did you notice I burned my hand then? Turn this around. Where are we? You've got to do it in shot. It's really, really hard. This, oops, with all the stuff in the way, but uh, including the tripod. So I'll fill a bit more in here. I try not to get it on the outside because then the heat shrink may not go over it quite so well. Flip that over, do the other one. Here we go. And again, as I say, I apologize for the bad angles on the camera, but I want to get this done reasonably quickly because everyone's saying, where's the next part of the video? Here we go. And now, of course, we just, I've already tinned my wires coming off the back of the thing there. All I've got to do now is put these wires in place. So um, 
I will, if I'm in shot still, yes, put the wire in the right place there. Tighten that up a bit so it doesn't tip it over. And then what I'm just going to do is put the iron on here and it should all just sweat down and flow into a lovely soldered joint, which hopefully when I take the iron off, you'll see, look at that, isn't that beautiful? I could have even used a bit more solder, but that's going to be perfectly adequate for this. And yes, I did remember to put the heat shrink on first for all those going, oh no, I bet she's forgotten. No, I haven't forgotten. So turn everything over, do the other side. The second one should be easier because the wire on the bottom will help hold it in place. And again, I've got plenty of solder loaded up and everything, heated up, still got flux in it. So there you go, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? There's our soldering job. So now we just slide the heat shrink over, let it cool down before you slide the heat shrink over. Otherwise, the heat shrink will start shrinking as soon as it hits this hot metal here and you'll never get it right over. And that'll ruin your day because you'll have to do it all again. Oops, reaches around for all the mess. Once you've got your heat shrink on, of course, then all you gotta do is just blast it with some hot air or, you know, the back of your soldering iron, or some people use a lighter, some people use a hairdryer. You can use a lot of things. Um, if you've got a mother-in-law, you can use her, probably a lot of hot air comes out of them quite often. Oh, now I've made myself, got myself in trouble with a whole new section of the community because I've said bad things about mother-in-laws. Never mind. Right, there we go. Put that back in its stand. So there is, um, let me just zoom out a bit. Well, so you can see what I'm talking about here. And... Voila, now we've got enough. And this can be taped, as I say, this can be rubber banded against the side of this standoff here. So it keeps everything out, or you can even cable tie it if you like. So it's gonna keep all the wiring out of the propellers when we've got this together. So that looks really long, longer than most people make it, but it's the only way I've found to actually stop losing battery leads to prop strikes. Okay, now if you've got a multimeter, it's a good time to use it now. Set your multimeter so that you get that beeping noise when you put the probes together. Take your XT60 and just put your meter on here to make sure that it's not going to beep continuously. There we go, see there was a little, little beep when you first put it on, the capacitor's charging, but basically, and I'll turn it around to make sure the other way is okay. Basically what we have here is hey, something that should be fine because if this was shorted, we'd get the beep, but we don't. Woohoo, that means when we plug our battery in, we shouldn't get smoke coming out unless we've made a really bad mistake somewhere else. Now at this stage, if you want to make sure that you've done everything right, you can make sure these little wires we've got for the LEDs, make sure they're not touching together, we don't want a short circuit. You can get a servo tester, I mean these servo testers, you get them anywhere, they're really cheap. You must have a servo tester if you can do anything in models these days, including multi-rotors, because they're just so damn useful. What we'll do is we'll plug our servo tester in, in fact, the beauty of this is we can plug them all in at once. This is a, I think Fly Dream made this one. They sent it to me and it really does seem quite cool. So I use it a lot. It's a really useful bit of kit. I'll plug all my ESCs into the servo tester, like so. I say this is an optional step. It's just if you want to make sure you haven't really stuffed things up. So I've got all my ESCs plugged into the servo tester, wind it right down to minimum. And then if we plug our battery in, we should get the noise. We got a noise. Now if I turn it up, the motor should start turning. Way they're spinning, look at that. And this one should be spinning that way, yes. This one should be spinning that way, it is. And this way, and this way. So they're all going the right way. Kill the noise. They're all going the right way. And if you notice, they're actually, we won't even have to calibrate them because they all start at exactly the same time. But I'll show you the calibration process Anyway, so here we are. We've got our wiring system all in place. I think we'll call it quits for this part of the build video. I'm gonna have to do another one. Um, you know, this is, I had hoped to do it in three parts. Who was I kidding? Something that's supposed to take five minutes takes five hours. And I've had to do a couple of takes on some of these things. So this video is gonna be long enough as it is. So we'll call it quits for part three. In the next part of this build video, I will be dealing with setting up the naze, um, obviously plugging all these things in, getting the right order. Uh, we'll look at wiring up the LEDs here, putting the FPV equipment in, putting the camera in, and the video transmitter and so forth. And so one more installment should do it, I think, hopefully. So this, what was going to be a three-part build has turned into a four-part. And I'm gonna follow it up with how to fly your mini quad. And you'll hear the tapping of white canes because, <laughs> you know, I'm not the world's best mini quad flyer, so, but I'll tell you what I've learned in the process of actually coming to grips with these machines, how to get the most out of them. If you're a nano flyer like me, or maybe even you could be better than me, in fact, most people would be, but I'll give you some of the basics so you don't have to uh, make the same mistakes that I did. So 
In the meantime, if you've got any questions, comments, anything to say about this build video, if, you've got, if I've done something wrong, if you can think of a better way to do something, then by all means, throw such things into the comment section below the description of this video, which YouTube has kindly provided for that purpose. Now, I will get back to doing the next part. Hopefully that'll be up in a day or so. And uh, we can all get our mini quads into the air at once. Don't forget, as I say, email me, um, queries at rcmodelreviews.com, and I will make up some of these balls and I'll give them away to the first however many people I can afford to give them to when they send me their name and address and say please, please Mr RC Model Reviews send me one of those cool boards that you made for the ZMR250 build. Thank you for watching, it's time for me to now get back to the bench.